Hi everyone. Today we are going to do an introduction to image representation in software, and this is so we can start preparing for the ArduCam software. So the purpose of this lesson, uh, we're going to understand the basics of image representation in software, and this is so we can understand uh, the ArduCam's features and also to prepare how to start manipulating image data with Arduino. So first we need to know what a bitmap is. So it's the simplest way to represent image data, and this is how pictures are represented um, in software. So an image is divided into small squares called pixels, and the image on the right here, um, you can kind of see a cat, and it consists of 256 pixels, and that's because we have a 16 by 16 um, pixel image, which makes 256. Um, so here, each pixel is either black or white. And basically what we can do with this, we can store this information using binary digits. Um, and this is by representing each pixel with either a one or a zero. And in this case, a black pixel is a one and a white pixel is a zero. You can quickly look back and forth and see how that's the case. So with 256 pixels in this image, and each pixel requiring one bit of memory, this image takes up 256 bits of memory. So therefore we can call this a 256 bit image um, or bitmap image, but we're just going to stick to calling it image. And if you remember, there are eight bits and one byte. So if you wanted to convert this 256 bit image into bytes, all you do is divide by eight, and you see that this is a 32, um, this is 32 bytes. So we're getting a little denser here. So image resolution is a measure of the pixel density, and this is usually given in dots per inch or DPI. Not sure if you've seen this um, whenever you're trying to download an image, you have to define how many um, dots per inch there are, but that this is basically it. So obviously the higher the resolution, the better the quality of the image. And here the image is 100 by 100 pixels, which makes it 10,000 pixels in total. And again, you can see here that each bit, sorry, each pixel is either black or white. Therefore, we need only one bit to represent this information. Because again, a bit, you either have a zero or a one. So, and when it comes to monochrome pictures, you only use black and white. Grayscale is an eight bit type of thing, but um, we'll talk about that another time. So, each pixel requires one bit since it's monochrome. Therefore, this picture takes up about 10,000 bits of memory which is the same as 1,250 bytes. And since one kilobyte is 1,024 bytes, I'll explain why in just a bit, this image is 9.77 kilobytes, or KB. So that's right, one kilobyte is 1,024 bytes, not 1,000. And so even though kilo does mean 1,000, um, since computers are based on the binary system, um, this means that memory is measured in powers of two in the real world when it comes to computers. So you're right to think that a kilobyte is 1000, but since computers work the way they do with binary, you have to represent things in powers of two, as you can see here. So we end up working our way to the closest thing to 1000, which is two to the 10, which is 1024. And so, you know, because of this, computers consider one kilobyte to be 1024 bytes. Similarly, 1024 kilobytes is one megabyte. And 1024 megabytes is one gigabyte. And notice how bytes are presented with a capital B. You usually see a lowercase b when it's in bits. So now what about color images? So this is where uh, 
you actually um, focus on the amount of bits per pixel. So to display an image in color, more than one bit is needed to describe the color of each pixel. So on the right, for example, you can see 25 pixels. Um, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Five times five is 25. So there's 25 pixels here. And what we're going to do is assign each pixel eight bits. And so that means we have two to the eighth, which is 256 values or different color shades. You can either make these color shades, you know, the rainbow colors that we see, or, you know, from grayscale, like from black to white, you know, 256 different shades. Um, but, we also do this with color images. And here's an example. So this image here, it's 100 by 100 pixels, um, but each pixel is going to have eight bits instead of one bit this time. So this means that each pixel can be 256 different colors. And so when it comes to defining this in memory, um, we can say that this image takes up 10,000 bits times eight, sorry, 10,000 pixels times eight bits, 80,000 bits. So this is an 80,000 bit image. And we can represent this in bytes by dividing by eight. So this is a 10,000 byte image. And again, we can represent this in kilobytes. It's more common for us to use kilobytes, megabytes, and gigabytes. So this is why we're learning how to convert. And again, there is going to be 1,024 um, bytes in a kilobyte. So we have 10,000 divided by 1,024 is 9.77 kilobytes. So this image takes up 9.77 kilobytes of memory. Oh, this is a very a much nicer image, obviously. Here we have a 9,000, sorry, 960 by 640 image, sorry, 960 by 640 pixel image. And this has a much higher resolution um, because we're also doing 24 bits per pixel. And so that means every single pixel can have 16 million seven this big number amount of different colors so let me go to the next slide real quick so i can show you so this is actually this is what how many color options you get in a 24-bit pixel so there's about 16 million that big number there's that many different shades of color per pixel in this image. And remember, there are 614,400 pixels in this image. So at this point, this is ridiculously large compared to, oops, compared to this image. <laughs> right. So anyway, when you do all the conversions, uh, you can see that since there's 24 bits, that's the same thing as three bytes. So we can say each pixel requires three bytes. And since we have 6, 000, sorry, 614,400 um, pixels that each require three bytes, we can say that this whole image is 1,843,200 bytes or 1,800 kilobytes. More appropriately, we can go to the megabytes and we can say that this is a 1.76 megabyte picture. And these values are more common today. Um, we usually see this type of resolution everywhere, but it all depends on the application. So again, here's the amount of shades there are in a 24 bit pixel, which is a lot. And quick summary. So, the quality of a bitmap image depends on two things, and that's the resolution, which again is how many pixels you have, and which is the pixel density. Second, it's the color depth. 
So this is represented by the number of bits used to encode each pixel. And so the higher the resolution and the higher the color depth, the better quality you're going to get. But remember, this does take up a lot of memory. And this is where it gets interesting for us. When it comes to many applications in communications or electronics, CubeSats, memory matters a lot. It has to do a lot with our data rates. And here, here's three quick examples. So memory is important because you need to consider the max amount of memory in a chip like an SD card. And so this determines how many pictures we can hold, what's the, the, the quality of the picture that we can hold in an SD card. You know, this SD card can be in our CubeSat which is very important. And this is also important because it determines your transfer rate. You know, if you have um, a specific baud rate, you need to calculate exactly how much time it's going to take for you to say, um, download a five megabit or megabyte picture. And, you know, we, we can do this through your Spire, I2C. There's many different methods you can do um, to transfer pictures, but memory does matter. And this is especially crucial when it comes to a CubeSat. When you have the comm system, it always has a specific data rate. You know, as it's traveling over you, you have only a very specific amount of time for the CubeSat to be visible. So you need to determine if you can downlink a picture in enough time or not. And that stuff is very complicated. Um, in concept, it's pretty easy. And honestly, once you start learning all this, it's pretty simple too. It's just, there's a lot of terminology and things going on, but this is why you practice. Let's look at the Ardu camera real quick in order for us to start getting a sense of what we're going to be dealing with. So the Ardu cam features, um, they include the fact that the Ardu cam can capture five, um, five megapixel JPEG images and it could also take a five uh, megapixel full resolution raw image. And these are the highest settings on the camera. We could actually reduce the settings and you know, take up less space. But you know, this is very important because uh, we are going to have to be very careful with how much memory we have, you know, the timing that it takes to do everything, how much processing. Remember that you know, the longer something takes to transmit, like your power system, the longer it has to operate, therefore it consumes even more power. You know, you have to be very careful with your batteries. Um, there's just multiple things to consider that add up. And this is actually the funnest part. Well, this is one of the funnest part, in, in my opinion, figuring out exactly, um, you know, what you can actually do when you're in space. But that's going to be for down the line. But right now we're going to focus on the details, which are going to be very, very helpful down the line. So this camera takes 8-bit, um, well, it has 8-bit or 10-bit pixels. Um, and a fun fact is that you could actually record videos using these cameras. Um, but obviously these video files are going to be huge. So don't expect to be taking very many videos in space you know <laughs> it's you know you can do five megapixels at 15 frames per second which is really fast um and these are other resolutions that you can do with the amount of frames per second and that is just a lot of memory that you know one new cube sets don't tend to deal with so we're going to stick with pictures for now but yeah just fun fact we're going to dig into this a lot deeper and there's much more exciting material to come. So I hope you understood. Make sure to go back to the lecture slides. Um, they're going to be posted in the Teams um, page. Um, you'll see. And yes, thank you. It's going to be very exciting learning a lot more about all this. Thank you.